Okay, let me finish today by showing you two uh, numerical experiments. And uh, this first one is going to be extremely short. I would just like to show you why uh, it absolutely makes sense to view an image as uh, the realization of a statistical process. And um, I want to show you what uh, the influence of the covariance matrix is in this case. Okay, so uh, more or less what I will do, let's skip all this. Um, let me just generate a random uh, matrix, a uh, random image of size. I think this is something like 65 by 65. So um, the, uh, it's ran uh, the, um, the image is uh, normally distributed with um, mean zero and covariance identity matrix. So each pix all pixels are independent and uh, this is something like what you would expect, right? Seems like white noise, whatever. So uh, this would not generally be accepted as a reasonable image. Okay, as I said, um, a typical image model will include some correlation between pixels. So now we assume uh, that uh, neighboring pixels are highly correlated, which means that uh, they, um, their values uh, should be almost equal with a high probability. And um, we know how to generate a random um, a normally distributed um, normally distributed uh, image with uh, these uh, with this uh, covariance matrix the way we defined the uh, normal distribution we just have to apply the covariance matrix to the thing to the image uh, that was um, that was generated with uh, covariance one variance identity matrix so all we have to do is interpret this image as a vector, multiply by the covariance matrix and convert to an image again. So more or less what, what I do, I just take the covariance matrix, take the square root, apply it to this image over here, and uh, then I show you the result. Okay, so uh, now I generated a covariance matrix where uh, the entries are in fact the norm between the positions of each, uh, the norm of the difference of the positions between two pixels. So the higher the uh, norm, the higher the difference, the higher the norm of the um, difference between two uh, pixels is, the less uh, correlated they will be. Uh, it's one over the norm, okay. Okay, uh, so uh, by the way, this was uh, the covariance matrix that came out. And when I now do this, I apply the covariance matrix or the square root of this covariance matrix to this image over here, then I get this one. And uh, well, it is a random image, but uh, it would much more be accepted as a typical image than uh, the one before. So let me prove to you that this is indeed random. So if I do that again, so generate a different image here. And again, apply the covariance matrix to this one, I get a different image, but still it looks like an image. Okay, so um, the choice of covariance matrix is actually crucial and uh, it obviously gives um, some kind of filtering here. And uh, so that's a side note uh, I would like to make. Um, the matrix elements of the matrix that we apply here are now dependent on the norm of xi minus xk, where xi and xk are the positions of pixel i and pixel k. So uh, the matrix, um, and so the matrix elements depend on i minus k, finally since um, xi and xk are equally distributed on uh, in the um, um, one in the minus one one square grid so um, 
the, uh, the matrix elements depend on uh, I minus K. That means that the matrix represents a convolution. And uh, so applying the matrix is nothing but a convolution. And in terms of our um, of uh, the way we interpreted everything in analytical things, this is a filter, right? So it can also be interpreted as uh, as a filter. So um, we, we could take the Fourier transform of this one, multiply it in Fourier space with a reasonable function that can be computed and, uh, um, and do the back transform, and then we would get exactly this image again. Okay, so um, that means if I take a reasonable covariance matrix, I get out uh, 